Hey folks, Sean here. And in this episode, I want to talk to you about the elements of the B2B SaaS business model, which I've recently done a deep dive on in my latest article that's posted on my website. Now I'll link to that in the show notes below if you want to check out all of the additional detail that I have in there. But in this specific episode, I want to talk about the freemium model and what I like and don't like about it. Now, the freemium model, if you're unfamiliar, is essentially saying that you're going to create a tier for your product, which enables people to have free access, supposedly indefinitely, as in you're going to have paid tiers. That's the emium part of the freemium model, as in people can use your product for free, but only up to a certain point for a period of time. Then if they go beyond a certain amount of capacity, then they're going to have to upgrade. Like I'm using a tool right now. It's an AI tool called Crisp. I think it's actually a great tool, but it does noise canceling. That's one of the most valuable features of it so far. And the freemium aspect of their model is it limits you in terms of how much time you can use the noise canceling feature each day. So once you go beyond, I think it's 90 minutes is their limit. You have to upgrade if you want to use it for more than that period of time each day. However, thus far, I haven't really found a need to go beyond that because I'm just selectively using the noise canceling element for the period of time in which I need it, which doesn't necessarily go beyond that limit at the moment. So in this situation, I've so far just kept the free version because I'm not needing to really go beyond the free tier. And that is what I want to tell you is one of the dangers of the freemium model. Now it has become incorporated into my routine. So I think that's one of the positive aspects of the freemium model as in if it offers the free option to a certain extent, then you have the ability to cross a particular milestone, which can be a really important one in terms of getting your users and customers to adopt your product. And that is forming a habit with using it. There's a great book out there called Hooked, written by um, a friend of mine, uh, his name is Nier. It talks a lot about this concept of ensuring, like optimizing your product experience so that it enables you to have the best opportunity to form a habit with your users. Because that is a lot harder than it sounds. As we're trying to help our customers improve the solutions to their problems, getting them to switch from how they used to solve it to how they solve it with our product is harder than probably most of us think. So that's an important element I and mean, the freemium can really help you do that with a very low barrier to entry for your users and customers. But the challenge there, and I've done this with several products thus far, I can name a number of them, B2B SaaS products like this AI tool that I'm using now, HubSpot, which I've been using for years, and Slack, which is another one. For the most part, and with limited exception, I haven't really paid for almost any of those tools paid features because the free version that they offer is adequate for me. So that's why I don't love the freemium model. Instead, I like a free trial. So I would encourage you if you are, especially if you're getting started here, to not leverage the freemium model and to instead switch to a free trial. Now that's where you get a limited period of time or a certain amount to use the product, but then after that you're locked out. And in order to gain access to it again, you have to pay for it. I like that a lot better, especially in the beginning, because if you start out with a freemium model and you don't have the threshold set correctly and you don't really understand where the important activation points are going to be, then you could wind up in one of these traps where you're just essentially giving a lot of value away and no one for the most part is really converting. They're not converting at a rate that you need them to in order to generate the kind of value to turn your software into a proper business. That's the risk. And you may not know until a much later date and at that point, you might have a ton of users who just expected to use the product for free. Something else that I'm going to talk a lot about when it gets to diving deeper into B2B SaaS business models is it is insanely difficult to convert someone who was expecting a product to be free than to become a paid user of something. That's why it's really difficult to start out with a free product and then at a later date, try to monetize it. We've seen examples of that with a ton of products across history and for the most part, that has not gone well. And some of those were not able to actually sustain operations and become a business. So it ended up sinking a lot of those products. So takeaway here is to better understand what a freemium model is, 
and compare and contrast those differences with instead a free tier for gaining access to your B2B SaaS. And also, in my personal opinion, why I don't love the freemium model, it's got limited application and I think too much risk, and why I strongly prefer you to consider just offering a free tier instead.